Hello and welcome to Gadget First. Today we've got Nokia's Lumia 800. This is a Windows Phone 7.5 phone. Uh, win uh, Mango. This is Windows 7.5 is Mango. And today we're just going to be taking a really detailed look at this phone. So if I zoom out. All right, there we go. Right, so the whole phone is carved out of one solid bit of uh, polycarbonate. It, it is plastic, but it is a very good plastic, if you know what I mean. It's not like uh, a cheap feeling material, it really does feel nice. It's similar to, um, if you ever touch the back of a Milestone 2, it's got that soft touch kind of feel to it. This is very similar, it feels a lot like that. So onto the aesthetics of the phone. I really like this phone. There's a lot of people that have been saying, oh, it's a bit weird, it's a bit weird, I don't like it, it's a bit weird. But I really love it. I like the straight edges along here and, and here. It kind of tapers a little bit up here. Gets slightly wider down into the middle of the phone. But I really like it. Uh, you've got a curved display on the front. The actual display itself isn't curved, I have to point out. The glass on top, the digitizer, is curved slightly. Uh, not sure how best I can show you that. Maybe there. Um, it means the screen is slightly higher than the rest of the uh, bits on the phone. So, I mean, part of me thinks that, you know, that puts the screen at a weak point because if, it, if you drop it, it's going to land on the glass first, if you know what I mean. But it makes it so much easier, easier to use. With Windows Phone, there's a lot of swiping around on the uh, interface if you've seen like the Metro interface and the fact that you haven't got any like bezels or anything stopping your finger. If I get uh, my Milestone 2 that I use on a daily basis Sorry about that, I'm not using a very good form of holding the camera up today because I seem to have lost my tripod. That sounds a bit weird but I'll carry on. Yeah, so what I was saying is my Milestone 2 which is what I use as my actual phone has the screen is slightly recessed below this bezel. It means, it means the screen is better protected because it's not going to land on the screen first but it makes it just a little bit harder swiping across so that's why I really do prefer this. Um, what, else was I, what else is there? Um, yeah so let's just go on to the buttons and external features. So we have a back button here, the start button here search button here which opens up Bing. We have the Nokia logo on top, the uh, speaker here for calls. On top we have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack and what I really like about this is this is the uh, charging port or micro USB for data transfer or charging and we've also got the micro SIM port here. The way you do it is you see a little bowl kind of thing there, little dome. You push that in clips up like that which is really cool because it means uh, it's not exposed when you're not using it and to get to the micro sim you I'll show you that again you push down slightly and then push to the left and then that comes out it's a bit fiddly if you've got massively big fingers but it's not nothing too nothing too bad and I've got a micro sim in here which was the one I showed you in the video not too long ago about the gift gaff micro sims so you put that back in. On the right hand side we have the volume rocker. We have the unlock key. I like the unlock key being on the, on the uh, right hand side as well. Uh, it's good for me because I'm right handed so I, when, I, when it's in my hand I just click it there. It comes on, nice. It's better than being on top. But I can imagine if you're left handed it might be a bit harder. Not quite as natural. We've got the camera key which is one stage to focus, second stage to actually take the picture. On the back we have this silver uh, finish where the camera is, the actual camera which is an 8 megapixel one and dual flash. One thing to note is that this silver uh, finish here does scratch very easily. We've had this review unit for two weeks now and it has scratched already. So that's, mm, I don't mind too much because I'm not going to look at it all the time. But it's one thing to look out for if you don't like scratches. 
and there's the cat. Hopefully she's not in the shop. So on the bottom we have the speaker. Uh, this is the main like loudspeaker and the CE logo. So not much, not much else uh, to show. Ah, I can show you the taper a bit better here. You see how it tapers? I mean, it looks quite cool in my opinion. The design is overall pretty much the exact same design as the Nokia N9, which had a slightly bigger screen. This one's 3.7 inch. Then the N9 was 3.9. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. However, the N9 ran uh, Mego, I think it was. So. If I'm just going to unlock the phone now. So we get the usual uh, Windows phone unlock. Basically what you do, I need to turn the screen brightness down on this actually. What you do is you slide the picture up and then it's unlocked. I don't know if you heard the sound. It has like a liquid kind of sound to it. And when you lock it again it does that. It's quite cool. I'm just going to go turn down the... Actually no I won't. It's, that's not bad. So here we have the home screen, although it's not really a home screen, they call it the uh, start screen as it's Windows Phone, you know, going with the theme. So yeah, you have these tiles, they're all li they're live tiles, basically the people tile shows all the people in your contact list, their pictures and stuff. You can change the tiles, you can tap and hold, and then you can change where they're pinned which is quite handy. You can pin uh, favourites of websites, you can pin contacts on here. It's really handy, it makes the phone a lot quicker to use. Uh, the whole point of Windows Phone was that you take it out your pocket, you do what you want, you put it back in your pocket, making it more like a phone, less like a computer if you know what I mean. And I really like that, it does make it a lot more streamlined to use. So yeah, to get to all your apps, you can either tap that arrow there, or you can just swipe. Another thing that I like about Windows Phone is that it's just so smooth. If you ever used an Android phone, the majority of them, you can notice a subtle amount of lag to it. I've got nothing against Android, I mean it's what I use on a daily basis, but it does have lag to it. Especially on my Milestone 2, it's not the smoothest of Android phones. So I'm going to turn the screen brightness down a little bit. So you come to just the settings here. And then where is it? brightness. So I'll put it down to low so you can see the screen a little bit better. So, um, this 3.7 inch screen is Nokia's uh, Nokia's version of the Super AMOLED, Super AMOLED Plus screens and I think it's true black and it does what it says. The blacks on this, on the uh, dark colours on the screen really are as close to black as you can get and on the whole the screen is nice and bright when you want it to be and the saturation is really good it's one of the best screens I've seen on a phone lately <laughs> alright so I'll just show you um, some of Nokia's apps maybe so Nokia Maps here I mean, this might cause a little bit of confusion for some people, um, because, you know, you've already got Microsoft's maps on here, so people will be wondering, well, why have I got Nokia maps on here? And, yeah, I can see what you mean, but Nokia obviously wants to put their own stuff on here to make the phone uh, slightly differentiated from the other Windows phones, because a lot of Windows phones just do, do seem quite the same, so Nokia is just differentiating their own, I guess. You've got Nokia Drive on here, which is quite good. This is their navigation software. I haven't used it yet because I, well, I have used it, but it was doing the first, first setup thing because I've done a system reset before this review. But yeah, you, you have the option to download uh, different countries, so it doesn't use your internet, which is a lot better than, say, Google Maps or, or Bing, because that requires internet, and, you know, if you've, if you've got slow internet or you're in a rural place that doesn't have internet, then you're screwed for navigation, whereas this 
is more of a traditional kind of navigation where it um, uses memory built on the phone rather than downloading the directions so it's quite good another thing is um, slide across if I go down oh it's not on here but there is another app Nokia Music um, it's got Nokia's own music store on there and it acts as a music player as well that's something that might confuse people as well is that you've already got Zoom on here so why do you want Nokia Music it's just a bit uh, I don't like it that much to be honest So in this phone, the internals, we have 512 megabyte of RAM, which is the standard really, it's not really too high end, it's not low end, it's just the standard really. We have a 1.4 gigahertz Scorpion processor in here, um, it's not dual core, it is single core, so I mean, it seems really snappy, everything like, everything works really lovely and smooth, apps start up nice and quickly. Uh, so I think the process is perfectly adequate, but you know, people always want the best and it's not a dual core, so if you're looking for a dual core, this isn't the phone for you. Um, I'll take a look at the camera now. So you can get to the camera, even when it's locked, you can press and hold the camera key and that will unlock it and go straight to the camera. Basically the standard Windows Phone camera app here, you've got the settings here. You've got flash, no flash, and automatic flash. You can save your settings. You've got different scenes, different uh, metering modes, contrast, white balance, how it focuses. On the whole, um, I'm a little bit disappointed with, with this camera um, because Nokia does go on about you know, their special optics. and It is 8 megapixels, so you would expect it to be quite good. And Nokia's had a good... Um, a good lot of phones in the past that have had good cameras for their time whereas this is just seems a bit average if I take a photo of my phone here here we go so it does have, does have touch, uh, touch focus sorry just tap and it will focus on what I've pressed on on the screen and I really like the fact that you can just swipe through like this and go straight back to the camera but the actual quality of the image Although it's really good, you know, it is good, it's not up to the standards of what we were making out because of the hype and everything. We were expecting a little bit better. But on the whole, it's not a bad camera. Colours are uh, represented all right. There's a, there is a lot of detail when you zoom in, I'll admit that. But colour reproduction just isn't quite as brilliant as I thought it was going to be. And... Neither is the flash really. The flash isn't as good as say like a Xenon flash or even a flash on some of the other dual flash phones. It's just not up there with the best. As this phone is running uh, the latest version of Windows Phone, which is Windows Phone 6, uh, 7.5, otherwise known as Mango, uh, it has multitasking, which is the biggest feature probably, but well, in my opinion with Windows Phone, you tap and hold the back button and you get like a cards interface, it's similar to the, uh, the Palm devices it runs fairly smooth, although you can't uh, close apps from here like on the Palm devices you would slide up to uh, close the app but you can't on here, it is literally just switching between apps and not managing whether they're open or not although everything does run smoothly on it so onto the browser the difference between this and the old version of Windows Phone is that the address bar is now at the bottom rather than the top. I actually prefer this because I can hold it in my hand and just instead of stretching my thumb all the way up there, just go down there. It's just human laziness really. Yeah, sorry if I'm snivelling, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment because my lovely girlfriend gave it to me. <laughs> so in Windows Phone you've got these three dots which is basically the menu button if you're familiar, familiar with Android, you can tap it or you can slide it and then you get more options depending on what app you're in. The browser is really quick, um, if I, yeah I'm on Wi-Fi here, I'm on 8 meg internet so 
if I go on to www.bbc.co.uk. This is what we use to test phones because it's quite a stressful website, it has a lot of information on it. Uh, most phones struggle to render it smoothly when you're zooming in and out, especially Android phones. So we've got the nice smooth transition there. And then scrolling down, it's all still really smooth. Zooming in, perfectly smooth. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I can say about the internet browsing. It is really quick. Zooming in and out with pinch to zoom is ultra smooth. Uh, it doesn't have Adobe Flash, although it does support HTML5, so you're not missing out on too much there. So this phone comes with 16 gigabyte of inbuilt memory. Does not have an SD card because uh, Microsoft wouldn't allow the um, manufacturers to include SD card slots on Windows phones. However, 16 gig is perfectly adequate. The phone, uh, we've got the black version here obviously, does come in blue and pink as well. And if I just, I'll just go uh, get the box quickly because I'll show you what comes in the box. Right then, so you get a free pin plug adapter, obviously it would be a bit different if you're in a different country. And basically this is one of the ones where you use the USB uh, USB lead to plug it in. Uh, I guess it saves on making uh, separate charges. So that can obviously be used as a data lead as well for syncing your phone with Zoom. Uh, I've got the box here. So uh, plenty of opening it the wrong way like usual. Right. Not for resale. Right. So yeah, the phone comes in this. You get this is what I really wanted to show you is this case. So yeah, comes with a case which I find is really useful actually. It's really good of Nokia to include a case because you know they're, they're quite useful really just get that side in there I'm not sure on um oh yeah this obviously helps with the problem that I was detailing earlier with the screen being higher than the rest of the phone because now it isn't it's got a little bit of clearance so if I drop it face first it won't do, it won't do quite as much damage um, I'm pretty sure that the different colours of the phone will come with different coloured cases, although you'd have to check with Nokia for that, I'm not 100% on that. So I'll just take that off. You also get, you know, usual paperwork, how to use your phone, warranty guides, safety guides, and a pair of Nokia um, earphones. That's one thing, one grumble I do have, this, do have with this phone is the music playback. Although the actual quality of it isn't bad, it's really good, uh, when you plug a, head, a pair of headphones in here, th there's no equaliser on the uh, music player in Windows Phone. I've looked everywhere, there's no equaliser and the output of the sound just seems a little bit baseless. It's plenty detailed enough, I can hear all the, de all the detail in the song with my pair of, um, I've got a Creative EP830s and yeah I can hear the detail but there's just no bass and it's not like it's my headphones because I plug the exact same pair into my milestone and I've got plenty of bass again so yeah it's not brilliant the weight of this phone um, is pretty much perfect, it feels perfect in the hand it's that like perfect sweet, sweet spot in between being a bloody nuisance, like, ooh, heavy phone, like this, this is the mixing beast, and it's not quite as light as, well, not and not anywhere near as light as the Galaxy S2, but that's a good thing actually, I find, because the Galaxy S2 is so light that it feels like it's going to snap in your pocket. It feels like it's got no, doesn't feel like premium quality materials, whereas this really does. Uh, the battery isn't removable on this phone but the battery life I've found has been really good. Um, it's lasted two days without a charge, 
with regular email, with, with it regularly, like going onto my email servers, getting new emails, regular texting, regular calling. It has lasted over over a day and two days in some circumstances. So really impressive battery life. Cool quality on the Nokia, on the Nokia is better than I was hoping because I saw this tiny little uh, earphone, well, not earphone, like speaker, here. and I really wasn't expecting good things from it. I mean, it's tiny. It's like, oh my god, how's you going to get any good sound from that? But it was actually really good. Cool quality. Yeah, it's really good. The volume is nice. The clarity is really good. There's not much like static sound, whereas with this, I don't know why I'm comparing it to the my Motorola, but with this, it just seems that has a lot of static in it. So yeah, it's loud and clear. Same with the speaker on the bottom. If I play my usual testing song, Uprising by Muse. Oh, where's music? Music and video. Oh, are you telling me I don't have the resistance on here? Oh, brilliant. Well, I'll try a different one. I'll just do bliss. So the volume's on 30 out of 30. And I'll just put the speaker near the camera mic. So nice and clear. Not any complaints about that at all. Another thing you've got to bear in mind is that this is a Windows phone and at the moment Windows phone just doesn't seem to have quite as many apps as iOS and Android. Android recently hit, I think it's uh, 500 million apps, or is it a bit more? I can't remember, but there's over 500 million apps on Android and even more on iOS. So, you know, there's more of a range of apps on there. And I find it easier, the marketplace, to be easier to use on Android and iOS. So, if you're fanatic about apps, then you might want to consider an iPhone or an Android phone over this. But, I mean, this really does have everything in it that you're going to need, but if you like to play around and get new apps, then it might not be for you. So, one of the features that is very limited to uh, Windows Phone phones, I mean Windows phones, that sounds a bit better, is Microsoft Office. You've got complete access to pretty much everything that you have on a desktop version of Office. We've got Word, Excel, you, can, you um, can't you can make PowerPoints on here, but you can edit them, i found. If I go on this one, this is the example presentation, you can edit it, like there. You can type in your own uh, titles, subtitles, and change things around a bit. But you've got full Excel, it's like there's no messing around, it is just proper Excel. All the sums, all the formulas are all there. So that's something that, you know, if you get it on iOS, it's going to cost you like a good tenner to get a good uh, Office application, whereas it's all pre-installed on here. Um, syncing with this is done through Zoom, which is Microsoft's bit of software for the computer. I shall show you that now, actually. May as well. So let's go on to Zoom. So go and go on this screen then, okay. Now I find Zoom not to be the quickest application in the world for this kind of thing, but the way it does it makes it all look really nice and just yeah just nice and smooth so you basically you plug it in and it's easy you just so say I wanted to copy this album onto my phone you literally just drag it down onto the phone icon 
and that will go on there. It seems really quick to sync as well. Um, there's nothing physical to it because it's a USB lead, but it does seem quicker than um, iTunes, syncing your iPod or iPhone with iTunes. So, yeah, Zoom isn't too bad. You've got a marketplace on it as well. So then, uh, final impressions of the Nokia Lumia 800 are really good. We really love uh, Windows Phone on it. Windows Phone just makes it a whole lot better. We've seen Symbian and Mego on pretty much all previous Nokia phones and it's just outdated to be perfectly honest. There's not very many apps on it. It's limited in what you can do. I love the look of it. Sorry, I've got no tripod so sorry if it's a bit shaky. The look of it is just, I, mean, I know it's really subjective, but I love it. The screen is really, really nice. It does catch up fingerprints, as you can see, but they wipe off really, really easily. The camera is it's not what we expected. We expected a little bit better, but, you know, for taking a couple shots every now and then, a 720p video, it's it's quite good, it's adequate. The flash isn't too bad. It doesn't light up a room quite as bright as you might expect though. Build quality is just fantastic. There's not quite as many apps on Windows Phone as there are on Android and iPhones. But on the whole, uh, there's still a good choice of apps there. really like Nokia's uh, navigation, their navigation app. It's really good. Saves you from using your internet bandwidth um, with like things like Bing Maps and Google Maps, using them for navigation because they rely on the internet rather than uh, something built in your phone. So really like that. On the whole, I'm going to give this phone an eight out of ten because I really, really do think it's worth the money. You can get it for about four hundred and fifty crap, uh, four hundred and fifty pounds on sim free you can get it around 400 pay as you go and I've seen it around 25 pounds on pay monthly so on the whole I think it's a really good deal